Coming up next, The Electric Playground, followed by Judgment Day at 9.30 and Pulse at 10. Today on Electric Playground, we're taking a look at the suffering. James Bond, 007, everything or nothing. Voodoo Vince for the Xbox. And Batman, Rise of Sin Tzu. You've been waiting for your chance to stop an evil madman from taking control of the world? Well, now's your chance. James Bond is back in everything or nothing. All right, you ready for Bond? I'm here with Don to talk about 007, everything or nothing. You know, everyone loves, you know, Goldeneye. Why go first person? Well, I think there's a couple reasons why. I mean, number one, we don't have a Bond movie this year. And so people want to know, well, what's James Bond about? So we want to go and deliver, you know, deliver his style, his attitude, his his movements, his you know, his actions, all those kind of things that you couldn't see before and uh, really understand why Bond is so cool. What we couldn't do last year was actually show James Bond do all the cool stunts and actions that you see him in the movies. So imagine yourself like if you're surrounded by three guys and you know they're, they're gonna gang up on you. Well, this year what you're gonna have is you're gonna be able to have hand-to-hand -hand combat. So you'll be popping one guy in the face and then the guy behind you, you'll elbow the guy and then the guy right next to you, you'll be basically throwing him and flipping around. Uh, we're bringing some of the old Bond cast back so you'll have Judy Dench as M, you'll have John Cleese as Q. We're even bringing back Jaws, you know, Richard Keel as Jaws because, hey, he's a badass Bond henchman. And on top of that, we're bringing in new faces because uh, we want to really show how Bond is fresh this year. So as our Bond villain, we're bringing in Willem Dafoe. And on top of that, our good Bond girl is Shannon Elizabeth, and our bad Bond girl is actually Heidi Klum. Can you fly this, Mr. Bond? James Bond. And last year's uh, game, obviously, was Nightfire, was known for, you know, the first person levels and also the driving levels. Are we going to have sort of a combination of that again? Oh, yeah. And I think this is going to be more uh, more intensity, especially with the driving levels, because Bond's going to be on the motorcycle for the first time. He's going to be on the Triumph Daytona 600. So you're riding this motorcycle down the what we call the Pontchartrain Bridge, which is in New Orleans. You're driving through the bridge. You're chasing after Jaws because he has this tanker. He's taking this tanker full of explosives to go on down to New Orleans. He's trying to blow New Orleans up. So you got to chase him through all this traffic, and you're just totally driving it through. And of course, we still have the Aston Martin Vanquish. We even have an off-road vehicle with the Porsche Cayenne, the helicopters, tanks. So we really up the, you know, up the ante on the driving side as well. Tell me a bit about the plot. I mean, the fact that it's written by this guy who's written actual Bond movies. I mean, what's the story? What is Bond doing this time? There's this technology called the nanotechnology, which is uh, basically whatever you see of those little circuit chips being built. Um, you know, those little things you typically can't see building those little tiny circuit chips would be the central focus around this whole game. What it is is that these guys who, you know, if you know about Russia, it's like now kind of, uh, I wouldn't say they've degraded, but there's some segment of Russia where you gotta have some good guys there. And they're trying to say, you know what, We're, we want the old glory back. And then you're gonna see these guys trying to alter the now technology to destructive ways that you'll see in the game on how exactly, that, how destructive that's gonna be. One day are we gonna, you know, have a situation where this game could potentially become the next Bond movie because it's such a great story? Yeah, don't be surprised because I'll tell you right now, just a lot of things we're being able to pull in. I think a lot of people from here on out will see all the things that we can pull off in the game and we'll say, hey, can we pull that off in the movie? And I think you'll see some interesting things coming out pretty soon. So, so Heidi or Shannon, what's your pick? Oh gosh, I love both of them. I know that I love Shannon because she's a total gamer, right. but I love Heidi because she's, she has that smile that just wins you over. But you know, the fact is, Heidi is going to be the bad girl, so it's a little bit of Heidi that I'm kind of digging. I'm here with Shannon and Elizabeth, and I wanted to ask you, a lot of actresses and actors are moving into video games and actually starring in video games. Have you ever thought about that for your career? Yeah, I'm starring one right now. I'm the, I'm the new Bond girl in the James Bond video game. Tell us about it. It'll be out in the fall, and um, I'm the Bond girl with Pierce Brosnan, and they have William Defoe, and um, they have a really good cast of people for it. So, How did you like working on a video game? Um, it was actually pretty easy. I don't have the hard part. The animators have the hard part. So I just did a lot of voiceover, and they did my likeness. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Stick around. We're coming right back with Batman Rise of Sin Tzu. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. I hadn't seen him in a while. I wasn't sure if he'd recognize me. So I jogged his memory. Again. And again. <laughs> That's 
the end of the career, I think, right there, girls start punking you. Maybe you can get a number or something. Yeah, at least get a date on Please. it or something. <laughs> I still don't know if he knows my name, but I'm pretty sure I left an impression. <laughs> Check this out. This is what we do for a living. We're video game designers. And we're game programmers. With the training offered at Collins College, you can learn to design, code, and test games like this. And this. Game design is a growing career. For a brochure on a career in game design, call Collins College at 1-888-256-1200 now. That's 1-888-256-1200. Call Collins College now. Microsoft's about to release a brand new game for the X for the Xbox called Voodoo Vince, and it stars a cool little voodoo doll, and we brought out some voodoo dolls of our own. Yeah. Check this out. Sweet! Sweet! Oh. Oh. How'd you like that, huh? It's not too bad. Show you some of this. Yeah. Hey! Oh! Right in the munchkin. I'm really excited about this next game called Voodoo Vince, because it takes place in New Orleans, and Voodoo doll who's trying to save who? Uh, Madame Charmaine, his creator. Uh, Vince is her uh, third best voodoo doll, and he's been. Uh, only third best? Yeah, only his third best. Well, he's a humble guy, but he's, he's quite powerful, as you'll find out. So, did she get kidnapped? Uh, yeah, she's been kidnapped, and, and Vince's uh, quest is to rescue her. There's this guy, Cosmo, the inscrutable Cosmo. And he's stolen some of the uh, magic dust, the voodoo dust, from Madame Charmaine's uh, shop. And so as he's going off through there, it's falling out of the truck, you know? And it's warping the world. These guys are coming to life. And this magic is what Vince has to battle on his way. Uh, so, so magic kills Vince. And how does Vince kill magic? Well, he works up voodoo powers. Now, he can take them on uh, with combat, you know? He can, he can kick some pretty good butt out there, you know, spin kicks and slam dunk, and uh, every time he does, beads come out of the monsters. So, like Mardi Gras beads? Yeah, and nice colorful beads. And, and the blooms? Do they need the blooms in the, mo in the game? No, there's no... No, no there's, the blooms? There's some, there's some extra special stuff, but I can't give it all away. Oh, okay. But these beads um, add up to a voodoo power, and we, we do, when Vince has got that, he can release it and do an area effect and kill many of the monsters. There are like 30 different voodoo powers. The effects from those are really top notch. We've got like a cow falling out of the sky on him. There's a chainsaw, there's a bomb. Does he have an actual weapon or is it more just magic? And yeah, he's very cunning. Sometimes the monsters can't be foiled with his regular voodoo power. So he's got to use his intellect to figure out how to defeat him. One of the situations, a pair of gas pumps at the end of Main Street. And they've come to life and they're drunk on their own gasoline. What Vince has to do is catch on fire because, you know, he's... He has to catch on fire. Yeah, he's burlap and straw, so he burns <laughs> okay. pretty good. But he goes out, so he doesn't last a whole long time. So you got to figure out how to stay lit to get him to the gas station. Oh, so pretty good puzzle, that one. How many levels do we play? Oh, uh, we've got, my last count, 40 levels. Are we going to have vehicles to move around in? Yeah, or? yeah. there's a lot of different modes of transportation he's using. we got a fan boat race. A fan boat? And is there Mardi Gras? Uh, well, there's you a can't tell me, can you? You want to keep it secret. You got to tell me. There, there is a carnival. Okay. Well, you can go to the carnival and have a little fun on some of the rides and stuff. That's... <laughs> All right. Well, the game looks awesome. I can't wait to be a voodoo doll myself. And uh, good luck. Hey, get online and talk with the EP community at bb.electplay.com. That's bb.electplay.com. I'm standing here with Mike Kunkel, who is going to tell us all about Hero Bear and the Kid. Now, I've not read this book at all, so as a newbie, take me into your world here a little bit. It is the story of a young boy that inherits a gift from his grandfather. It is a stuffed bear and a broken pocket watch. Not normally what a 10 or 11 year old wants to carry around with him unless really wants to get the snot beat out of him. It turns into Hero Bear, who is real, it's not his imagination, it actually becomes his best friend in the world. What you learn going through the process of it is that there is a generational gift that has been given to him by his grandfather. It kind of sounds like a little Calvin and Hobbes type scenario. It's got scenario. flavors of that. It's yeah. got flavors of, of Calvin. It's got flavors of like the Raggedy Ann and Andy, uh, Wonder Years and Stand By Me flavor of the writing. All those have the, the type of nostalgia that I wanted to put into this and then just put drawings to it. I love the artwork actually. Are you responsible for the art in the stories as well? Yeah. 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 My background is animation. So 
I worked at Disney and Warner's and everywhere else. The idea was, since I do come from animation, I wanted it to feel like you're actually watching it move. You actually get a lot of movement out of it. You feel like there's a cartoon to it. Now, I understand that the, the big news here with Hero Bear, though, is that you have a feature film in the works. Yes, it is going to be all hand-drawn. This is the template to make it look exactly like this and we feel really good about everything. It's going to be really awesome. Welcome to Xbox Live Wire. I've got Chris Wolf on the other end of my Xbox Live connection. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm playing uh, one of my favorite Xbox Live games called Midtown Madness 3. And I wanted to give our audience a little bit uh, of a taste of what you can actually get with the Xbox Live games in this thing. Midtown Madness 3 is, is one of the best games on Xbox Live. Obviously, it's a racing game where you basically select a variety of cars and you get to race around uh, like actual versions of both Paris and Washington, D.C. And what we're playing here uh, is a game of tag. Right now, I'm at, I got the little lightning bolt above my car, meaning I got to go find you, basically tag you in switch modes. And I have to stay away from you for as long as possible, right? That's right. Basically, you got to stay away from me as long as possible now. I'm trying to find you right now. I'm winning is what you're telling me. <laughs> you're kicking my butt right now, so. <laughs> One of the cool things about this game is how many different multiplayer modes there are. It's not just one game, right? That's right. There's a whole assortment of different multiplayer modes. You can actually just hop on and cruise around uh, Paris or Washington DC with a bunch of your buddies. Or you can play all the different game modes. So we're playing Tag. Um, there's another version called Hunter, which is, which is basically a version of Team Tag. One person starts off as it. When you tag the next person, then both people are it until all eight players are it. And the last person kind of standing wins. There's a mode called Capture the Gold, which essentially is whoever gets the most gold wins. You can also play these modes in, in team combat, so you can join teams, so it's four and four, both of you running around trying to capture the gold, and whoever gets the most gold wins. In terms of getting online and playing Xbox Live, do you have to unlock all the vehicles in the single player game, or do you get them all right away? You don't, actually. When you set up the game, you can set it up in a variety of methods. So um, I set up this game that we're playing, and I, I got to choose the car class that we played in. So you can play in kind of your, um, your performance vehicles. I'm driving a Lotus Esprit. But you can change different vehicles, so everybody's driving around in minis. Minis or Beetles, or even have a, a race between dump trucks. So um, it, it really depends on who the, uh, who the host of the game is. Let's get serious now, OK? I'm it, and I'm coming to get you. All right. Oh, this one looks scary. We're coming right back with the suffering. Stick around. Introduces the first seamless integration of iPod and automobile. There's only one award show for gamers, G-Foria. Where wondrous celebs, heavenly vans, and gaming's biggest awards come together in a paradise for players. Join us for the ultimate gamer celebration. Watch it only on G4 Tech TV. G-Foria. Sponsored by EB Games and G. The last time we caught up with Surreal Software, they were working on a dragon game called Draken. Well, now they've gone considerably darker with their brand new survival horror game called The Suffering. Take a look at this. All right, we're hitting the prison with Alan from Surreal talking about The Suffering, a brand new game from Midway. So what's The Suffering? What does that mean? What's the title all about? The suffering uh, sort of represents the horror of this prison. You take control of Torque, who is uh, sentenced to death for a crime that he doesn't even remember. As you begin the game, you're set on Carnate Island, which is this sort of island with this dubious history of killings and uh, murders and things like that. So when you're put onto this island in death row, this sort of cataclysmic event occurs and all these horrific apparitions appear, and then you have to fight through this. In doing so, you sort of figure out what you were imprisoned for and whether you actually indeed did the crime or not. Depending on how you play, the outcomes vary. And when do you actually make that choice between good and bad? 
there's several choices throughout the course of the game. You encounter a guy in a gas chamber, you have the option of flipping the switch and killing him if you like. If you don't, you can try to help him. So there's a lot of situations that we present throughout the course of the game to give the player the choice, and that's the, really the important part, is to give that player the moral choice in choosing good or evil. Now there's also a, a, a medium way to play the game as well. So if you choose to play sort of half the game as evil, and then you decide, hey, I'm gonna start helping people, there's an ending which adapts to that as well. So it's very dynamic throughout the course of the game. It's got a pretty deep story. What about the actual gameplay? Is what sort of separates this game from every other third person action game out there? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that there really has never been a, a third person game in a horror setting like this, you know, uh, in a truly immersive horror setting. I mean, that's one of the things we're doing is we're taking sort of the survival horror elements of, say, a, a Resident Evil, a very cinematic experience, and sort of translating that into real-time 3D. And I mean, there's no better way, I feel, to create a horrific environment than actually place the player in it. You know, not have static cameras, but allow the player to full access to this environment so that you know, you're looking around. You are controlling where you're looking. Am I going to see something over here? Am I going to see something over there? One of the most exciting things about this horror setting is you're working with Stan Winston, a guy who, you know, is known for great creature design. How did that partnership sort of come about? Midway actually had a relationship with them, and they asked if we would like to uh, work with them, and we were, yeah, sure, sounds great. <laughs> so we were, it was a very collaborative effort. You know, we had already come up with a, a lot of the execution methods that we wanted to build upon for the game design, and they helped us translate it into, uh, you know, a, a working in-game model. Well, I guess this is one not to play with your kids. Definitely for mature audiences only. All right. Thanks, Alan. Production assistance for Electric Playground is provided by Nintendo, publishers of F-Zero GX for the GameCube. Sony, publishers of Jack 2 for the PlayStation 2. And Microsoft, publishers of Voodoo Vince for the Xbox. I sometimes like to play as Batgirl, sometimes I like to be Batgirl. Right. Sometimes I like to play as Batman 2, though. You, you ever know? Batgirl out in public at all? You ever? <laughs> no. No? No, I haven't Are taken sure? it on the road yet. No? No. Okay, you don't, have, you don't have a costume back home or anything that you want to tell us about? Hey. Hey. It's, just the, it's just you and me here. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Just yeah. a cape. Just a cape.